Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are going to discuss the last part of cell as a unit of health and disease that is part number 6. So in this topic of discussion, we are going to discuss about the cell cycle, then we are going to discuss about the stem cells and in the end we are going to discuss about regenerative medicine. So let us understand cell cycle now. Now remember, cellular proliferation is very important for the development of an organism or for tissue homeostasis or for replacement of dead or damaged cell. Now, what are the requirements for the cell cycle? So, what are the things that is necessary for a proper cell cycle? So, first of all, there should be an accurate DNA replication. The DNA material should be replicated accurately. Along with that, there should be coordinated synthesis of other cellular components, for example, the mitochondria, the Golgi apparatus, the endoplasmic reticulum. So, the other cellular organelles and other cell components has to be synthesized and duplicated as well. And not only that, after that, the cell should make, uh, you know, the cell should make sure that there is an equal distribution of the DNA as well as the organelles between the two daughter cells. So, it is very, very important that the DNA that is basically duplicated by mitosis and the organelles that has been synthesized by cytokinesis, they have to be equally distributed among the daughter cells, okay? So, very important requirement, proper DNA replication, proper synthesis of other organelles and proper distribution between the two daughter cells. So, all the sequence of events that is leading to cell proliferation is called as cell cycle. So, what is the definition of cell cycle? It is the sequence of events which leads to cell proliferation is called as the cell cycle. Now, there are different phases and there are different parts of a cell cycle. I am just going to give you the full form and the short form of each one. So, G1 stands for gap 1, G2 stands for gap 2, S stands for DNA synthesis phase, M stands for mitotic phase. So, these phases are quite self explanatory. Okay? Now, G0 basically stands as gap 0 state. It is a state where the quiescent cells are not actively dividing. So, any cell that is not actively dividing, they are said to be in the G0 quiescent phase. Okay? Now, remember, after a round of mitosis, now remember, okay, for example, a cell has completed its mitosis and after a round of mitosis, the daughter cells okay, might again go to the G1 phase or a quiescent cell after having witnessed some kind of cell damage, they again will go to the G1 phase. So, the source of cells in the G1 phase is either a cell that has already performed a mitosis and now is, re is uh, ready for the second round or a basically a quiescent cell now wants to enter into a state of division. Maybe there is uh, some kind of requirement or there is some kind of damage. So, because of that, those quiescent cells will now enter the G1 phase. So, this is basically the cell cycle as you can appreciate in this particular diagram. So, basically if you see over here, very importantly, there are different phases. So, for example, over here, as you can see that basically there is a G1 phase over here, then we have the S phase, then we have the G2 phase and then we have the M phase. Okay? So, it is in the G1 phase if you see very importantly either one cell, okay, if you see that over here cell division has occurred, so there are two daughter cells. Okay? So, what is going to happen that either the same daughter cell is going to enter the G1 phase okay, or certain quiescent cells, they are going to enter the G1 state. Okay? So, over here in the G1 phase, there is a growth in the mass and there is a centrosome duplication. After that is coming what is called as a restriction point. Now, what is the meaning of a restriction point? Let us try and understand. So, the G1 restriction point, I am talking about this particular point. What is the point? It refers to the stage in the G1 where the cell is committed to advance further into the cell cycle without requiring any more of the growth signal that initiated the cell division at the first place. So, it is restriction point is that phase okay, after which the cell becomes cell sufficient to carry out the replication process. Okay? So, it does not require any more signals to continue the process. After the after this restriction point comes a checkpoint. There are two important checkpoints. The first checkpoint is the G1S checkpoint, which is going to check for DNA damage. That means, what is the importance of this G1S? Now, before the cell is going to go for DNA duplication or DNA replication, they are going to check whether that DNA that is going to be duplicated, whether that DNA is of good quality or whether it has any kind of damage or no. Because this cell, they do not want to waste their resources. So, before they duplicate a content, they have to see whether the content to be duplicated is alright or no. This is a very important. Okay? 
So around this phase, okay, after this G1 S phase comes the S phase where the chromosomal duplication occurs, okay. Then comes the G2 phase and then there is a checkpoint that is called as the G2M checkpoint. Now what is the importance of the G2M checkpoint? It is at this G2M checkpoint that the cell is going to check whether the DNA replication happened properly or no, whether whatever content has been replicated, whether that process of replication was proper or no. So they will check for any damaged or any unduplicated DNA. Once the cell makes sure okay, that okay, the, the, the DNA content has been properly duplicated, then the cell will go for mitosis and that will be followed by cell division with two daughter cells. And again, these daughter cells might continue the cell cycle again. They might enter the G1 phase and then they can again continue the cell cycle. Now we are going to understand what is the role of certain cell cycle activators and cell cycle inhibitors. So first we will start with cell cycle activators. That means there are certain substances which is going to facilitate this cell cycle progression to occur. So the cell cycle is basically progressed or brought about by certain group of proteins which are called as cyclins. Okay? So cyclins are a group of proteins which helps in cell cycle. Now, why is that name cyclin? Because they are because of their cyclic nature of production and degradation. So, when the cell division is required, then they will be formed. When the cell division is completed, then they will be degraded. So, because of the cyclical nature, they are called as cyclins. The nature is that of proteins, very important. Number two, if you see over here, we are having cyclin dependent kinase. This is cyclin associated enzymes called as cyclin dependent kinase. Okay, remember both the cyclins and the cyclin dependent kinase, they are working in concert with each other. So, the first, the cyclin, they are going to go and they are going to increase the activity of cyclin dependent kinase. This cyclin dependent kinase having some enzyme activity, okay, once the cyclin is going to bind, they will increase the activity of the CDK enzyme that is followed by phosphorylation. After phosphorylation, the, then the cell division is going to occur. After that, the, after the process of phosphorylation, the cyclin again will be degraded in a cyclical manner that is going to cause reduced cyclin dependent kinase activity and the cycle continues. Now, there are more than 15 cyclins and like the cyclin D, E, A, B, okay, and all of them, they appear sequentially across the cell cycle. Now, as I already told you the importance of G1S phase, it is the checkpoint which monitors the DNA integrity before committing the cell towards replication. And another checkpoint is the G2N checkpoint, which is ensuring whether accurate DNA replication has taken place before the cell divides, okay. Now, in any of this process, if there is any kind of abnormality that takes place in any of this process, okay, it is going to cause the cell cycle to arrest. So, if there is any problem anywhere, okay, then the cell cycle is going to stop either at the G1S or at the G2M phase. In this stage, what is going to happen? The cell is going to try and repair the DNA. If the DNA repair becomes successful, the cell will return to the cell cycle. If the DNA repair becomes unsuccessful or there is a severe damage, it is going to trigger what is called as apoptosis or senescence, which is defined. Now, remember apoptosis is nothing but it is your cell death, okay? Whereas senescence is, it is a state of permanent cell cycle arrest, okay? So, this is how it goes. This is a very broad pattern in which I have explained and more in details will be discussed in the chapter of neoplasia. Now we will discuss about certain cell cycle, you know, cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors. There are certain inhibitors of these enzymes that is also at play. Now there are two groups. One is a specific group of cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor. One is a non-specific group of cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor. So the specific group, they contain P15, 16, 18 and 19. So they are called as CDK and 2B, 2A. 2C and 2D respectively. They are specific because they are inhibiting cyclin, cyclin dependent kinase 4 complex or they are, or they are inhibiting cyclin, cyclin dependent kinase 6 complex. So, they are specific and they are specifically inhibiting certain kinds of cyclin, cyclin dependent kinase complex. Okay? Then in under the non-specific variety of cyclin dependent kinase, there are three proteins, the P21, P27, P57 called as CDKN1A. N1B and N1C respectively. Now, they are non-specific because they inhibit multiple varieties of cyclin dependent kinase. Now, remember alterations in the cell cycle has been implicated in cancer and therefore, we, you have to know about these basic concepts before you read neoplasia. Okay. 
Now, as we can see, to be very specific, okay, we will first see that which kind of cyclin, which are the activators. We will first read about which are the activators of cell cycle. So, for example, the cyclin D, cyclin dependent kinase 4 complex, cyclin D, cyclin dependent kinase 6 complex, cyclin E, cyclin dependent kinase 2 complex, okay, they are promoting G1S transition. Similarly, the cyclin A, CDK2 and cyclin A, CDK1, they are active during the S phase. Whereas the cyclin B, CDK1, they are active during the G2M phase. Okay. So, what are the, so these are the activators and what are the inhibitors? As we have already seen, the INC4 inhibitors, that is the specific variety, the P15, 16, 18 and 19, they are inhibiting a specific group of cyclin D, CDK4 complex, cyclin D, CDK6 complex and the non-specific varieties, the P21, 27 and P57, they are inhibiting all varieties of cyclin dependent kinase. So, with this, we have got a fair bit of an idea about cell cycle. Now, we are going to understand the concept of stem cells. Now, remember that the stem cells, they have a dual property of self-renewal as well as it gives rise to differentiated cells and tissues. Now, totip, the, now there are two most important varieties of stem cells. Okay, In, uh, you know, in broader uh, sense, there are two varieties. One is the totipotent stem cell, which is having a full range of, you know, uh, uh, the totipotent stem cells, they can give rise to all kinds of tissues. Full range of tissues can be given rise, uh, you know, can arise from totipotent stem cells, okay, or embryonic stem cells. Whereas, adult stem cells are those stem cells which only have the capacity to replace damaged cells and maintain cell population within tissues that they reside. That means, for example, if we are talking about the liver stem cell, then these stem cells are only going to give rise to the hepatocytes, okay. They are not going to give rise to the lung tissue or to the breast tissue or to the other tissues of the body, okay. So, that is the difference between totipotent and adult. So, totipotent can give rise to all types of tissue. For example, from there, they can give rise to myocardial cells, pancreatic cells, neurons, blood cells, uh, hematopoietic stem cells. All these things can arise from totipotent stem cells. But from adult stem cells, only cells of that particular tissue in which that stem cell is residing can arise from adult stem cells. Okay. Now, remember, these are the two extremes. Okay. This is the one which is completely undifferentiated variety and these are completely differentiated stem cells. In between these two varieties, there are also such population of stem cells which are lying between these extremes and they have varying capacity to differentiate into multiple or limited cell lineages. Okay, So, they, there are certain stem cells which might not be as much undifferentiated as totipotent and which might not be as limited as adult stem cells. So, they can give rise to multiple other you know, cells but within a certain limit. Okay, So, in normal tissues, normal tissues mean those tissues where there is no healing, there is degeneration or there is no neoplasia, no degeneration, no healing. All this process is not happening. So, in a normal tissue, the two processes are in equilibrium. Which two process? The process of replication, the process of self-renewal or the process of differentiation of the stem cells. They are in equilibrium with the death of mature or fully differentiated cells. Okay, Very important thing. So, there is always an equilibrium with the amount of cells that is getting lost from that particular tissue and the amount of cells that is basically getting formed in the tissue. So, there is an equilibrium always in normal healthy tissues. Now, if you see the stem cell division occurs in two ways. Number one, there is an asymmetric cell division and then there is a symmetric cell division. In normal adult differentiated tissues, normally asymmetric uh, you know, uh, cell, uh, stem cell division occurs. Over here, what happens? Asymmetric, why it is asymmetric? Because the stem cells, they are giving rise to two daughter cells. Okay, one and two. So, out of them, one daughter cell, they will go towards the differentiation pathway to form a mature cell. Whereas, another daughter cell, they are going to retain the self-renewal capacity and they are going to replenish the stem cell population. So, this is asymmetric stem cell division. Another variety is your symmetric variety wherein both the daughter cells, they are going to retain the, the self-renewal capacity and therefore, they are only going to you know, they are only going to increase the population of stem cells. So, such kind of symmetric uh, stem cell division is mainly seen in early embryogenesis, okay. In case of early embryogenesis, wherein such stem cell like potential is required, only in those situations you will find these type of uh, stem cell division or such type of st stem cell division can also occur under stressful situation conditions. For example, when the bone marrow 
population or the bone marrow stem cells they are repopulating after giving an ablative chemotherapy okay so these are the two various varieties of stem cell division okay now cell population regulation now how does normally our uh, you know cell population regulate so you see over here the stem cells if you see normal adult cells they are going for asymmetric cell division some of them will self renew and some of the daughter cells they are going to form baseline uh, you know cell population levels now this baseline cell population level they can either okay they can either self renew and they can maintain their baseline population number one or they can go towards differentiation for example if i uh, speak about stratified squamous epithelium so there are certain basal cells that is again going to go up become more polygonal till they go up and they become flat so that is the path of differentiation okay also sometimes they will go directly towards the path of proliferation or sometimes this baseline cell level can uh, you know complete the life cycle and they can undergo programmed cell death that is apoptosis okay so depending on you know this this is how the cell population is regulated okay so this is very very important now stem cells in the